Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where our spirit gets fed, where our faith grows stronger, and where we learn how to be overcomers. Hallelujah. The victorious life is the enjoyable life. It's the fun life. Get your Bible, get something to make a note with. Come on into the classroom. Let's release faith. The Lord knows there, with Him there is no restriction and limitation, whether it's time, space, culture, area. The Spirit is able to just cut through all of that, go above that and beyond that. And so He is able to minister to all of us individually, simultaneously, and perfectly. Believe you receive from him today. Father, all of us do reach out to you, asking you for the working of your Holy Spirit, your utterance, your, your grace, your quickening, your enlightening, your strengthening, and answers for right now. We purpose to be doers of it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Look again in our, in our text main text for our series that we're calling Faith That Overcomes, found in 1 John 5 and 4. 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. That shouldn't be surprising that what is born of the Creator can overcome the creation. And so he goes on to say, And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. In Romans, the 10th chapter, we saw that, um, quoting from the Old Testament, that how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, Romans 10, 15, and bring glad tidings of good things. He said, they, but they've not all obeyed the gospel. Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? Verse 17 in Young's Literal says, So then faith comes by a report, and the report by the saying of God, what, what God has said. And we saw, go ahead and turn there again, please, to Numbers 14. We saw in Numbers 13 and 14 this classic, perfect example of good report, bad report. Spirit of faith, spirit of fear. And uh, even though our covenant has changed, faith hasn't changed, fear hasn't changed, God hasn't changed, our access to God has changed by the coming and work of Jesus. And we're not made righteous through the keeping of the law or through our deeds. Uh, what the Lord has done has made us righteous. And our faith uh, justifies us. Hallelujah. But faith works exactly the same way. We saw when God told them that he had given them the promised land. The spies went and checked out the land, brought back, ten of them brought back an evil report. It says in Numbers 13, 32, that they brought back an evil report of the land. One verse said they slandered the land. And another said concerning the whole congregation, they despised that good land. And you might say, well, why are we still talking about that? I mean, that happened a long time ago. Because, as I keep saying, these principles and the spirit of these things doesn't change. It's exactly the same today. 1 Corinthians 10 talks about these things are written as examples to us they're written for our warning and for our instruction. What do you mean? Do you still face things that look like they're giants and insurmountable to you today? Yeah. Can you still be tempted to doubt and fear today? Yes. It, it all works just the same. 
and the spirit of fear is, will, will come against you. You'll have to resist it or it'll, it'll sway you. It'll influence you. And the spirit of faith is not just automatic that it falls on you and works through you. You have to choose to believe and you have to choose to feed your faith and you have to choose to exercise your faith. And the more you yield to that, the stronger faith gets in you and, and just affects every part of your life. Um, in the 14th chapter, when the people were uh, just talking nonsense, they were saying, if you couple this with Deuteronomy 1, they were saying, God hates us, and he brought us out here to kill us, he brought us out here to die. Well, see, the enemy has convinced them that God's not good. They have turned loose of the good report the glad news of the good things. God's a good God. He's got a good land picked out for you. He's got a good plan for you for the rest of your life. See, they chose to not believe that. They chose to believe lies. That God had this in mind all the time. That he's going to get you out here and kill you. Doesn't make sense. But fear doesn't have to make sense. Fear is unreasonable. Fear is illogical, especially when you're full of fear and panicky. But Caleb and Joshua, through all of this, held it together. <laughs> they, they kept their eyes on the prize. And the scripture said, verse 6, Joshua, son of Nun, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, they rent their clothes. They said, the land which we pass through, it's an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, he'll bring us into the land. He'll give it to us. A land which flows with milk and honey. Only rebel not against the Lord. Don't fear the people of the land. For they are bred for us. And their defense is departed from them. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. That's how faith talked then. It's how faith talks now. Hmm? Let's say you got a bunch of bills piled up on your table. They may look kind of Goliathy <laughs> to you. <laughs> the amount has <laughs> kept climbing. You can despair. You can cry. You can feel sorry for yourself. You can talk about all the reasons why it's that way. You can make excuses. It's the economy. It's the price of gas. It's this. Is that, and next time you look, the bills will be bigger. Faith doesn't talk like that. Come on, help me out. How, how does faith talk? Huh? Faith says, Bills, you're nothing before God. You're nothing before God. I'm a tither. Now, if you're not a tither, you want to fix that. I'm a giver. And so it comes back to me, good measure, pressed down. Shaken together. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. By Christ Jesus, I call every one of these bills paid. I call every one of these needs met. I call every debt paid off, paid in full. The Lord's with us. Amen. He'll get us through this. Amen. We will come out of come, come, same faith that Joshua talked, that Caleb talked, that Elijah talked. That David talked. That Jesus talked. Amen. Same faith. That's what the scripture said. 2 Corinthians 4.13 We having the same spirit of faith. What did the spirit of faith do? It says, I believe, therefore have I spoken. That's just like God. That's what he does. And it went on to say, we also believe. Hallelujah. Right? Yes. And therefore, come, come on, can you see it? Caleb and Joshua believed. And so they said it. What about us? We also believe. And, we also, and so we say it. You need to be saying some things over your life, over your children, over your finances, over your marriage, over your body, over your mind, over your church, over your ministry. Not just something wild that you pulled out of the air, something you got from God, some, a good report he gave you about it. Hallelujah. <laughs> and if you listen to the Spirit, 
He'll give you updates. He'll give you reports about things. He said something to me just a few days ago about a direction that would happen. And just a phrase. And oh man, I just jumped and I said, glory to God. Glory. It's a good report. Come on, can you see that? Now what needs to happen? Now I need to say that. I need to say what he said over us, over me, over it. I don't necessarily need to publish it to everybody else, but I need to say what he said. I believed, therefore have I spoken. And so it goes on to say that, uh, verse 22, the Lord said, all those men that have seen my glory and all the miracles I did, verse 23, surely they'll not see the land. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and has followed me fully. Everybody say, followed me fully. He followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now go with me to Joshua, please. Joshua, and it's the uh, 14th chapter. Joshua 14. And what we're doing by jumping from Numbers to Joshua is we are fast-forwarding through 40 years <laughs> of bad stuff in the desert, in the wilderness. And now, at Joshua here, 14, all of those men of that generation, and of course the older people and the women too, all of those folks from that generation, Joshua and Caleb, have now died. They're gone. We read earlier in the week the scripture that said there was not found one person of them. The only ones that were left were Joshua and Caleb. And so now it's come to pass what God said. They all died out in the desert except for those two. And the other, the young guys, the kids now have grown up and they're adults, the next generation. And... Um, uh, 40 years is a generation. Uh, 20 years is old enough to have a child, and then another 20 is old enough for that child to be old enough to have a child. Can you see that? So now they are at the border again. And now uh, Joshua and Caleb are 40 years older than they were. They're in their 80s now. And I want you to notice in verse 6, Joshua 14, 6, this is the NIV. It said, Now the men of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal. Now Caleb, whose name means dog, we talked about yesterday, he is from the tribe of Judah. That's his tribe. And he was a chief uh, of the Judah tribe because they picked top men from each tribe to send into the land to be the 12 spies. And so when they sent them in, Caleb represented Judah. And so now, all these years later, the men of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal. Joshua is now the leader instead of Moses. And uh, Caleb said, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me. I was 40 years old. When Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. And I brought, it, I brought him back a report according to my convictions or according to my heart. Was his report different from the other guys? Why? Because he had a different spirit. Right? Why? Because he, he's looking at something different than they're looking at. He's believing something different. Verse 8, but my brothers who went up with me, made the hearts of the people melt with fear. I, however, followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. I, I stayed after him. I wouldn't quit. So on that day, Moses swore to me, the land on which your feet, this is Moses talking to Caleb, the land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children forever. Because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Can you see how they keep bringing that up? Yes. Keep bringing that thing up? And, and see, that's what we talked about that yesterday's class. 
Why is that such a big deal? Because if you can be talked out of it, the enemy will see to it that enough opposition, enough confusion, temptation, whatever comes against you that you do. So you've got to be set to a place where you're not trying this. You're doing this. Come on, are y'all with me? We don't try serving God. We don't try prayer. We don't try tithing or faith. We're doing this thing. Is that right? He said, because you were wholehearted, you followed. Now then, he reminds Joshua (laughs) of what Moses said to him. He said, now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses, while Israel moved about in the desert. So here I am today, 85 years old. Now let's, let's just stop right here. Is that wholehearted or not? Would you have been tempted to give it up for 45 years circling? <laughs> the desert wasn't the worst of it. You know what the worst of it is? All these grumbling, complaining, (laughs) unbelieving people. That's the worst of it. And here's a sad thing. Unbelief can actually hinder you. Other people's unbelief, depending on the situation, it is possible other people's unbelief and unwillingness and rebellion, defiance, can hinder you, can delay something for you. What they can't do is stop it if you won't quit. But how many times in 45 years? You're getting older, right? Would you? Because what have you got to look forward to at the end of this 45 years? Fighting. (laughs) <laughs> is that right battle <laughs> what everybody else was too scared to do 45 years ago that's what you got ahead of you and to be excited about that and stay excited about that for 45 years it's no wonder the Lord said Caleb boy's got a different spirit <laughs> is that right and he is all the way after me. He will follow me to the end of the world. He will follow me for 45 years in the desert. He won't quit. He won't turn loose the dream. He won't turn loose his faith. He won't give it up. How many times for 45 years at nighttime over the campfire (laughs) did Joshua look at Caleb? Caleb looked at Joshua and said, I'm going in. <laughs> don't care what this other bunch does. And you remember what the Lord said? You remember what the Lord said to us? He said, Me and you, we're going in. They'd have to stir each other up in 45 years. So here they are at the border again. And he says, Today I'm, I'm 85. Verse 11. I'm still as strong today. As the day Moses sent me out, that that sent us out to spy the land 45 years ago. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Can God keep you? Even if somebody else, their unbelief is hindering you, getting in your way, and it's delaying something. See, you'd be tempted to think, well, I'm running out of time. I'm running out of opportunity. I'm getting older here. I'm a, listen, God can keep you. Amen. He can sustain you. Thank you Jesus. And here, uh, Caleb says, I'm telling you, I'm as good a man to fight today as I was back when I was uh, 40 years old. I'm telling you, I can strap it on. <laughs> I can get down with the best of them. And here, verse 12, oh, can you hear faith talking now? He says, now, see, Joshua was leader of the people. And they're at the point where they're going to actually do what they should have done 45 years ago. They're going to go in the land. They're going to fight the fight. They're going to take the land. They're going to take the cities. They're going to take the people. And, and Caleb 
is first to the party. And he says, Joshua, I need, I need, 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 we need to talk. I need to tell you this now. He said, you remember what Moses told us? Joshua says, of course I do. Yes, yes, yes. He said, I'm telling you, I'm as good to fight now as I was, you know, 45 years ago. And now, give me this mountain. And you know which one he pointed to? Giant mountain. (laughs) Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He said, give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard then that the Anakites were there. (laughs) After 45 years and at age 85, he's not toning it down. (laughs) I mean, just an average battle with average sized people. Could be challenging when you're 85. But no. No. Giant land was what he spied 45 years ago. And giant land is what he's going to have. Because the Lord told him he could have it. Oh, come on. Can y'all see this? See, his faith is not based on nothing. His faith is not based on wild speculation. The Lord told him he could have that land. That specific land. And so he said, that's mine. That's mine. You heard Moses say it. You heard the Lord tell him. You know, he told us. You heard him. But we know those Anakites are there. And the cities are large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will drive them out. Just as he said. Does that stir you or does that stir you? He said, "Give give me that giant mountain. Give it to me. I can do it. I know I look old, but I can fight. Don't you think I can't? Give it to me. Verse 13, then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. Now, this is faith. They're dividing it up before they go fight. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> this is calling those things that be not as though they already were. And uh, so Hebron has belonged to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, ever since. Why? Why? Because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. Oh, somebody say wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. Uh, The Bible said, you know, in Joshua 15, where where is that? Uh, 14 and 15. 13, it gives you the detail of it. It says, unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he gave a part among the children of Judah according to the commandment of the Lord. Even the city of Arba, the father of Anak, which city is Hebron. And Caleb drove thence the three sons of Anak, Shishai, Ahiman, Talmai. Those were giants of the descendants of the biggest most feared giant. You remember when they came back and said, we saw Anakims there. That's when the whole group lost it. And here, 45 years later, uh, Caleb says, I want them. <laughs> I, that, that, in fact, they're mine. God told me I could have them. And in Deuteronomy 9, it says, verse 2, it says, there are people great and tall, the children of Anakims, whom you know and whom you said, who can stand before the children of Anak. They were the biggest. They were the most feared. They were considered the impossible to defeat. But without reading all the rest of it, it happened. It happened. Caleb led the charge. And he and his group and his warriors, they went, they took that mountainous, hilly country. And when the giants came out, they took out every one of them. They they killed the seed of the giants so that they were no more in that land. And they possessed it. And, And Caleb's children and children's children, they even have an episode of his daughter coming afterwards and saying, Could you give me some extra stuff? And he said, sure. And he gave her a fountain and some stream and some waters and some things. They experienced what the people that should have experienced it never did. Because he had a different spirit. 
he and Joshua, and because they followed God fully. See, the Bible said in James, a double-minded man is what? Unstable in all his ways. Can you see stability in Joshua and Caleb? Whew, decade after decade, no change, no change. Faith and 85, strong as he ever was, in faith and in body. Hallelujah. Because that's what he needed to do what, what came next. Uh, being uncommitted makes you unstable. Up, down, in, out, on, off. Say it out loud. I refuse, I refuse to be lukewarm. To be lukewarm. I choose, I choose to serve my God, to, my God, to love my God, love my God with all my heart, all, all, my, heart, soul, all my soul, all my, soul, all my mind, all my, mind all, my all my strength, and to follow Him fully, follow him fully all, my days, all my days and beyond. And beyond. Hallelujah. 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 That's it for today. Our time's up. Uh, come back with us next time for a whole lot more. Can you get too much faith? I don't think so. We'll see you soon back here at Faith School. Really enjoyed being with you again this week. Uh, don't you get so stirred up when you see these men and women of faith and realize you've got that same spirit of faith in you? I want to thank everybody that's a partner with us. Uh, we believe with you. We, we're joining in faith for increase in your life. Uh, you'll have a reward of every one of these that you're a part of sending around the world. You want to believe that God's plan for you is a good plan. God gives good things to His children that trust Him. And the Scripture said uh, you won't faint if you believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Receive these words I speak of you. Lord, I speak increase a multiplication of seed and harvest over our partners. And I join faith with them. Uh, help them, Lord, to lay hold of every increase, of every harvest, of every good thing that you have for them. In Jesus' name, I bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well. Uh, there's so much more always to be seen and known. If you need to, go on the website and catch up from some of the past episodes and then come back next time for us to keep going into new areas from faith to faith, from glory to glory. We love you, believing over you and with you, speaking over you. We'll see you soon back here in Faith School. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today. But you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.